What's up, YouTube? It's your main man, AB the Hero, back again with another video. And your boy Magic Johnson went on first take earlier this week, and he gave all of the details, spilled all of the tea, as they say, on his situation with the Los Angeles Lakers. And so what we're going to do today is going to go over that interview, and then we're going to listen to and respond to some of the reactions from folks all around the media on this topic as well. Let's go. All right, so first off, let's start here. Your boy Magic Johnson is on first take, and I will say that I was surprised from the jump that he went on first take to talk about this. Then when I seen him on there, I assumed that he was going to address this situation, but I didn't think he was going to spill the tea the way that he did. I didn't think he was going to go into as much detail as he did. When he first quit, I feel like a lot of people thought you know, he gave, he gave some strong statements in that little interview that he did when he announced that he was stepping down and he said that he felt like his backstab. But I felt like a lot of people didn't feel like um, we were ever going to get the real true of what was going down. Like, give us the, the juice magic. I didn't think we were going to get that. And he did not disappoint, man. He gave us everything that you would have wanted if you were following this situation from the inside out. Let's take a look. What the hell happened? Why did you resign from the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, it was a couple couple reasons, you know. Um, first of all, when we sat down and negotiated, I told her, I said, listen, I can't give up all my businesses. I make more money doing that than becoming the president of the Lakers. So you know that I'm going to be in and out. Is that okay with you? She said, yes. I said, do I have the power to make decisions? Because that was important. Uh, for me to take the job as well. She said, you have the power to make the decisions. So um, I said, okay, let's go do it. She said, I'm gonna put you with Rob Palenka because I didn't know Rob. So right there, it's a couple things that I want to talk about with that. At the end, he says, she put it with Rob Palenka and he didn't know Rob, making it very clear that he was not my guy. And when this first happened, there was a lot of people who thought that magic gave Rob Palenka that opportunity himself. He's clearing that up. He was not my guy. She introduced us. She said that he was going to be the guy, and he went with it. And then I think, too, some of the rumors about him from Rob Palenka um, that he eventually goes on to say that well, was the person who was backstabbing him was about him being there and, and working as hard as he should have been on being the president of basketball operations for the Lakers. Here he's saying, yo, we had already had it set up. I was going to make all of the final decisions. I had this X amount of power, and, and that's the relationship that we were going to have. That did not come to fruition. Now, if you don't know who Rob Palenka is, I will say that Rob Palenka is one of those guys that if you search him and look up information on him on the Internet, you will find more people giving bad quotes on Rob Palenka than you would good quotes. And Magic Johnson did not help that at all because now when you search Mad Rob Palenka, all you get is backstabber. Magic Johnson says this. Now, I want to play a clip here from Andrew Schultz's podcast where he talks about how people with with where he talks about how people with inside the sports agent realm really view Rob Palenka as Rob Palenka is a pathological liar. Mm -hmm. This is known. You mean a sports agent is a pathological? <laughs> well, I'm glad you pointed that out. Liar? So he, no is, way. he is a pathological liar. This is known in NBA circles. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the league will attest to this. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a, a few people say similar things when they start talking about the Anthony Davis trade and how that was kind of hard to, to get together. A lot of folks were contributing that to Rob Palenka. Some folks clutch sports felt like they were trying to get muscled into it, but they were saying that a lot of people just around the league did not want to do deals with Rob Palenka just because on how he treated him as he was as he did when he was an agent, which was his previous career before being the GM of the Los Angeles Lakers and now the president of basketball operations. But let's get back into Magic and uh, why he officially stepped away from the Lakers. The straw that broke the camel's back was I wanted to fire Luke Walton. And we had Max three meetings. Um, I showed her the things he did well and the things he didn't do well. 
And I said, listen, we got to get a better coach. I like him. He's great. Former Laker, the whole thing. So the first day, well, let's think about it. Second day, okay, you can fire him. Then the next day, no, we should try to work it out. So when we went back and forth like that, and then she brought Tim Harrison to the meeting, you know, some of the guys. And Tim, you know, wanted me, he wanted to keep him because he was friends with Luke. And Luke's a great guy, mm -hmm. great guy. He is. And so when I looked up and said, wait a minute, I only really answer to Jeannie Buss. Now I got Tim involved. And I said, it's time for me to go. I got things happening that was being said behind my back. I don't have the power that I thought I had to make the decisions. And I told them, when it's not fun for me, when I think that I don't have the decision-making power that I thought I had, then I got to step aside. Let me go back. With all of that, that magic said right there, because he said a lot. And, and that's the part where I was saying, like, he really went into detail on, on a lot of things. And some of this stuff are things that I would have never expected him to say because they are validating the points of somebody that the media often tries to paint in a bad light, my dog LeVar Ball, who three months ago pretty much predicted this situation. I don't know if he predicted Magic stepping down, but he really spoke on the lack of power that Magic had. Also, he did a lot of speaking on the lack of ability that Luke Walton was showing as a head coach. And so it's interesting that this happened here now. And this is also one of the reasons why I believe Magic Johnson is because I'm sure that he realizes that um, in the media, you do look like, yo, uh, your boy LeVar was right. You know what I'm saying? And, and while for some people, that's not a good look. But let's listen to it. Yes. I mean, Why didn't Magic intervene? That's what I'm saying. Because Magic, I think, is, is, from my point of view now, listening to him talk and stuff like that, he's just a face. I don't think his say-so is like his say-so. Really? I know it's not, because he told me some things that I thought that should have been done. That's, that's nothing. Well, then you know, who is in charge? No, I'm, I'm trying to figure out who's in charge. That's why the system is, is crumbling down for, I don't know what's going on over there. Exactly, which makes so much sense, because Magic here is saying that he's beefing with Palenka, but then also he only answers the genie bus, but Tim Harris is in the meeting and all of these people, Kurt and Linda Rambis, you hear their names getting thrown in all of these situations. So then when you ask them, um, who is in charge over there? I don't know. And I think that this is the, a couple of things that I would predict that LeVar must have heard from Magic that didn't come true because Magic don't have as much power or didn't have as much power as he thought he did. I would say um, number one was obviously the firing of Luke Walton, which I can imagine that they probably had this conversation a few times and in some private conversations that he probably said, yo, we're working on some of the things that Luke is doing with Lonzo and those things never changed. The second thing was, I believe, it had something to do with Leangelo and him potentially getting a spot on the Lakers. And Magic and Lonzo, Magic and LeVar working the thing out. If you, you know what I'm saying, can make that happen for me, just give him a shot. Let's see what he look like. Then, you know what I'm saying, I'll step back a little bit or I'll, I'll do whatever you need to do in order to help, uh, you know what I'm saying, the Lakers organization take things to the next level. Now, let's uh, change directions here for a little bit. I don't know. Magic Johnson basically went on first take and, and dropped a lot of the dirt on Rob Palenka. If you have not seen all, they got like six or seven video clips on YouTube, but it's full interview that he did because he, he answered all of the questions, no holds bar. But in that same day is when the Lakers were introducing their new head coach, Frank Vogel. And the first question at that um, press conference was directed to um, Rob Palenka about Magic's comments. And here's what he had to say. Saddening and disheartening to think he believes things that are a misperception. I think all of us in life probably have been through things where maybe there's third party whispers or he said, she said things that aren't true. 
he uh-huh. kept he keeps going and going and going. But one of the things that I realize here is is <laughs> he's doing this thing where when somebody says, "Did you do something?" or somebody accuses you of something, the easiest way to shut that down is to directly straight up say, "I didn't do it. That nigga lying. That's a it's it's not real." And then so you, when you have to go into this thing and you start giving up all of this information that they didn't ask for and, and you start to, um, you know, we all have been in these situations where, you know, we make mistakes and we're doing, then you you know that 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 you did something, right? And it may be, you know, how it is, telephone, you know what I'm saying? One of these two things here maybe get changed ear to ear, mouth to mouth. But you know for a fact that you did something wrong and you're not admitting to it and you don't feel comfortable enough just coming outright and denying it because you probably know that a lot of folks are going to call you out on that and call you a liar. Now, I thought it was funny because that's what I was thinking when I heard that and my man Richard Jefferson pretty much um, backdoored me on these same thoughts. I'll just say this, when you look at somebody that's just been accused by one of the great American sports heroes of all time, right, of all time, literally is a part of saving the NBA and creating the NBA. When he says that you are a a snake and you have betrayed me, and your response is like, me? I can't believe you would say that about, I I had no idea. And and that's that's a fact. there's this is a long time ago. I took this uh, training on interrogation and interviewing. It was like a, a police training, and I wasn't trying to be a police. It was when I was directing this dorm. Long story, but uh, one of the, the things that they said that they can like when you're reading body language and you're trying to see if somebody's lying is you accuse them of something. And most of the time, when somebody didn't do it or they telling the truth, they can flat out say, "No, I did not do it." Right. When you say to somebody, hey, did you steal those shoes? And then they say, what shoes you talking about? You talking about the red ones? I ain't even got on those shoes. What shoes? Then they probably lying to you. If you say to somebody, did you steal them shoes? And they hit you with that. Hell no, I ain't steal no shoes. I th- That person might be telling the truth. Not all the time, but that person might be telling the truth. Um, so not everybody was on Magic Johnson's side in this situation. Ramona Shelburne, who is a Lakers reporter, she, um, I feel like sometimes, man, she, she do a little bit too much for me at times, but, you know, she is connected and she has her sources and she's somebody who has a ton of information allegedly on this topic. So I would assume that she has spoken to Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka because she was coming to bat for them hard on Twitter and then also on ESPN. The biggest thing with Magic going on first take the way he did, that's fine. You, you tell your truth, you speak your truth. But the problem was the Lakers had asked him multiple times. Right. Is there anything that we need to know about your departure? Is there anything you want to tell us about Rob Palenka or mm or about these rumors that we keep hearing because we all heard of those rumors right, right, right. and right. you would get very strong forceful denials from both people with the Lakers and people close to Magic Johnson so he was denying it to them and so we didn't know what to do with those and if if Magic had had told the Lakers multiple times there's nothing they need to know so Jeannie Buss had called him right. taken him to dinner and said let me know if there's anything I need to be aware of and he didn't say anything to her in that moment to the point where Rob Holinka spoke to him for an hour on Saturday and they just talked about the combine and the number four mm. pick, like everything was fine. And then you go on national TV and trash everyone. Like, so that's, that's pretty cold. Right. I mean, that's... See, this is the thing that, that, that it makes no sense to me. If she's saying everybody's heard these rumors and everybody knows, and everybody knows what Rob Holinka is allegedly saying about Magic Johnson, why do you then have to go to Magic Johnson and say, hey, man, can you tell us what's going on? Like, what, is, what's, what are the rumors that I'm hearing? Like, are you okay? Give me the information. You tell us. When you already know. If you know that he's saying something, if you, if you know that even if he didn't do it, and you know that people think that he's saying something negative about Magic. You then don't have to go to Magic to then tell you, oh yeah, man, I heard that too. Uh, you know, I was hoping that you could do something about it. If you're the leader, then you just go take action. You don't have to go to Magic to do that. When you need him to then throw him underneath the bus, which he would eventually end up doing here on first take, um, 
like you're saying a lot about your own personal leadership. Now, Nick Wright goes in a little bit on this same point, addressing what Ramona Shelburne just said. Nick, it's been reported that, that Buss was blindsided by all of the comments that Magic Johnson made. What do you make of that? If that's true, and Ramona Shelburne's reporting it, and she seems very well sourced on this, it seems like she has a real reporter source relationship with Jeannie, that then Jeannie Buss is unequipped for this job. If you could be blindsided by Magic Johnson, when he walked away, he said, I'm tired of the backstabbing and whispering. We deduced, he was talking about Rob Palenka. Everyone, he, there were two people he could be talking about, Jeannie or Rob. He kept mm -hmm. saying, I love Jeannie, I love Jeannie. Right. I don't have too much of a relation with Rob. How He used the word backstabbing in his previous press avail. So how could you be blindsided? And Jeannie knew I stopped him from firing the coach, which is one of the biggest jobs a president of basketball operations would have. I all of a sudden made him consult with Linda Rambis and Tim Harris. and So, it, so either she's misleading the public by, by saying or releasing or leaking she was blindsided, or she is in so far over her head. Because how could she be blindsided by something? There was, I don't think there was too much that shocking about Magic's interview yesterday. No. I was, a, I was a little surprised he went into as much detail as he did, and he really laid to bear his lack of relationship with Palenka. Yeah, that, that was and that's what I was saying, too, is right there at the end, he, said, he definitely went into more detail than I feel like most people were expecting him to do. But most people expected him not to be, not to speak so deep on this issue because most people could tell that there was a lot of bullshit happening behind this issue on the other end. So you didn't expect Magic to come out and just spill the tea. So now, if Jeannie Buss, in order to get the information, she needed to hear it from Magic, um, to me, does speak to like her inability to really play the game of thrones she need a lord of whispers or somebody to really give her some information that she trusts and because from what it still feels like to me is that she was trying not to be the person to really step in and handle business with rob palenka or ruffle any feathers with anybody else in that office. So she was just trying to like, look, if it's happened, if Magic really got a problem with it, he'll say something. If not, then he will, he'll, he'll let it slide. And I think when you really go into a lot of these, um, these, these interviews and listen to Magic talk, and he talks about the, the straw earlier, the straw that broke the camel back and the reason why he really stepped down is Magic. And this is the thing that I love about him in this. He's saying that, the reason why he stepped down was not because Rob Palenka was whispering and, and spreading rumors behind his back. It is because the environment just became not fun for him to work in anymore. And I believe that. And I believe that it also became one of those situations where he realized that it wasn't worth having these side arguments with all of these people. I already know what I need to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Now, a lot of people did not like the way that Magic stepped down in that press conference before the game. We've seen LeBron talk about that on his shop. Uh, we've seen a lot of people do that. And folks, even given this new information, are not letting Magic off the hook. What was your reaction to all of this? Okay, I think I want to preface it with this. No matter, let's just assume everything Magic said was true. You still don't quit your job that way. You just don't. You, you just, the way he did it, you, you don't quit you, the... They, I, I worked at a, at a shoe store part time in high school. I gave them two weeks' notice. Like you don't, you don't no show, no call, and you don't quit on the spot of any job, much less president of the Lakers. So I'm not letting them off the hook for that. Now, here's my thoughts on this. I totally understand what he's saying there. Like, the least you can do is is give them uh, give them some notice. All right, so here's one of the things that I really respect Magic for in this situation is that he's in one of these relationships where he obviously doesn't trust somebody, right? And then what we see in normal life is you're in a relationship with a loved one or a significant other, and when you don't trust them, you think they out here doing dirt behind your back, what do you do? You go through their phone, right? And what happens is 
you go through their phone and when you're looking for some stuff, typically you find something that warrants you to be even more upset, right? So when you do that, you either, you are in, in, in my eyes, you're in two situations, right? When you're with somebody and you don't trust them enough that you need to go through their phone and do a whole investigation, and you probably shouldn't be with that person anyway, right? And because the issue is that most of the time when you're somebody who needs to go through somebody's phone to prove whether or not you should be with them, no matter what you find, you're probably not going anywhere anyway. So then the situation just gets worse. So you either need to say, look, I don't trust you and I'm walking out the door or the shit is bad and I'm not even going to go there with you. I don't trust you, but I ain't finna go through your phone because even if I found some dirt, I wouldn't leave anyway. Magic Johnson is the guy who says either one or two things. He either found some dirt and decided, you know what, I'm dipping or he decided, you know what, I'm hearing too much stuff. And instead of me having to go in the office and talk to Jeannie and say, Jeannie, what's going on? Could you talk to Palenka or Rob? You know, I've been hearing things about you talking about me behind my back. He just said, you know what? I'm stepping away and I'm out of here on my own too. And I'm going to do it the way that I want to do it. And I had to respect him for that. I have had at least, I only think I've had like one job where I walked away from like on the day I was uh, supposed to show up for work and I like went in in my street clothes and then to turn in like my uniform and be like, yo, actually I'm not working today. And that was kind of cold blooded because then they had to find somebody to cover my shift for that day. And I should have gave them a heads up. But I think that I had got an opportunity to go out of town and, and I took that opportunity over it. So it wasn't even, and, and it was also probably cause I just didn't like that job in the first place, but this that's the whole magic johnson debacle i think some of the keys that we could take away from this is your boy lavar ball is is spot on a lot of times he's been off on some things but just give it some times and it seems like he is starting to fall in line with speaking things into existence um so it'll be interesting to see how the Lakers, you know what I'm saying, respond next year or actually this summer with free agency and how this is going to affect them with their ability to pick up free agents. I will say, I don't think that this will end up being as big a deal to deter free agents as most people believe it will be because it's the Los Angeles Lakers. It's an epic job. You're playing with LeBron James. Now, a lot of folks have turned down the Lakers in the past, but the way the, the way the NBA is currently set up with LeBron on the Lakers, before when folks were turning down the Lakers, you were going to a team that was rebuilding. You had an old-ass Kobe Bryant and a bunch of young guys. Now you've got a LeBron James, and you got some young guys who are becoming budding stars in the NBA. So I think that anybody who comes to the Lakers knows that they're going to have a good season and they're going to go deep into the playoffs next year. So despite who's coaching the team, despite who the president is and the general manager and all of that stuff, the next two years that LeBron is there, you know that y'all are going to have a solid basketball club. And so I don't think that that's going to affect them in the long run. But Shemay Man, ABD Hero, I'm out. Peace.